time now for our popular weekly cookery segment, Northern Nancy's Candry Kitchen, with this week's recipe, Sherry Trifle. Good afternoon Nancy and what are you going to make today for us? Today we're going to make a large sized trifle. This is my bowl that I'm going to make it in. First of all I'm preparing the base. In my base I've got a lot of trifle sponges. You can use Madeira cake or fairy cake or any stale cake that you've got. Here I am, I've got them in here, they come in packets of four. I'm putting them in there now, I'm going to break them up on this quite roughly because I'm going to put some liquid in here that will help them to disintegrate. My husband likes a lot of what he calls bottom rather than the, the uh, custard and cream on the top. Now, trifle sponges, what, what exactly is a trifle sponge? Well, it's a um, sponge made without fat. So it's, and you can buy packets of it at the supermarket. Of them, yes, right. you can get sponge fingers as well. Some people use sponge fingers. So how many trifle sponges did you say? I used 16. 16? That's two packets in there. There they are. Now, I'm going to make the liquid that goes in with them. First of all, I've got some orange juice, I'm pouring that in. Now that's an old packet, so I might need some more of that. Next, I'm going to put in some jam. Two good dessert spoonfuls of seedless raspberry jam. Now I'm going to let that melt in there. So again, just recapping, you've got some orange juice yes, and some seedless raspberry jam. Some and seedless. how much orange juice do you put in? I've put about half a cup full in. Half a cup of orange juice and yes. how much jam? Two good uh, dessert spoons. And you're making this to go on the trifle? Um, on the top of the trifle sponges. I'm just going to get some more orange juice in case this isn't sufficient. You can use any kind of juice, you can use cranberry juice, whichever you prefer, but we like orange juice. Now it's got to melt in here, it's a slow job melting this. When I finish this I'm going to put some sherry in it. You can put any kind of liquor in if you wish. So you don't um, actually melt the jam into the orange juice and sherry, you add the sherry add the separately sherry. at oh, the yes. end. Yes. This is my sherry, a good slug. So you're adding the sherry now that the raspberry juice yes. and it's orange juice has melted. Slug. Here I am pouring it onto the sponge cake. Now I'm not certain that I'm well, whether that will do. It looks as though it could do with some more. So the idea here is to moisten up the sponge before you add any anything else to the yes. pot. Or. And where where did um, this recipe come from? This is the recipe that my mother used to make. A lot of people put fruit in it. Uh, and you're not going to do that? I'm not going to put fruit in because my husband likes uh, it without fruit. I'm going to put some orange juice in there because that's not quite. So you adjust the, can the quantities of jam, orange juice and sherry to your, liking. to your liking until you've got some kind of moist consistency in the bowl. That's right. Some people do this with losing their hands. I wish you could smell this, it smells delicious. It's gradually coming together. It depends how old the sponge cakes are. They're very new. 
they grow they, um, a lot more quickly. So is there anything else? I mean, could you use stale cake if you yes, wanted you to could. instead That'd of uh, trifle sponge? Yes. That looks okay now. I'm going to tip that into my bowl. This is my serving mm -hmm. bowl. So to recap, you've taken 16 trifle sponges, you've broken them up into a bowl and you've added some raspberry jam and orange juice heated together in a pan yeah. with some yeah. sherry Added. so that you get a nice mixing for the base of the trifle and yes that's coming up really nice yes. and brown at the moment, <laughs> isn't it? That looks yes. very delicious. I'm going to make some custard and it's going to have eggs in it and some people only use yolks. I put it all in because I've never any use for the uh, whites because I can't make meringues. Okay, uh, I think a lot of people would probably just use custard out of a tin. Would, would that be all right in a trifle? Yes, yes, sure, it yeah. would be. So what are the main ingredients of custard? Well, here we are. Because I'm putting eggs in, I'm going to stabilise it by putting a little bit of corn flour or custard powder in. This is a level dessert spoonful of custard powder or you can use corn flour. And I'm going to put a drop of milk. I need a pint and a half of milk. This is the pint. Just mix that together. So you've got custard powder. Now that's something you can buy from the supermarket. Yes. Now what if you live in a country where you can't buy custard powder? What do you, would you use then? Well, you could use rice flour. So you can not bake it, not uh, uh, the, the kind of flour that you make cakes with. You could use rice flour. It would be a good, uh, a good one. And custard powder is what? It's had sugar added to it already in flavouring? No, I haven't put any sugar in yet. This, this is the milk. I've mixed that little bit. This is going to be heated. That's a now, can, can we just go back a bit to the custard powder? Because I know a lot of people will never have heard of custard powder. What exactly is custard powder? It's just uh, uh, corn flour with some flavouring. And what sort of flavouring is it? Vanilla. Right, so corn flour flavoured by vanilla, and that's something you could use if you didn't have any custard powder. Some people will put vanilla in here. This I'm going to heat. I just put it on to heat. Now I don't want it to heat very much because I'm going to put some eggs in there and it will curdle if I... Uh... So you've mixed the custard powder with some milk? Yes. And you're going to add some eggs. Now what are the yes. quantities again of custard powder and of milk that you're using? I've just put a table uh, dessert spoon of... Uh, custard powder. Custard powder in. Just to stabilise it. And I'm going to put some sugar in there. Now it's sugar to taste so I can't tell you how much of this to put in. Looks like you're putting... Um, I've put four in. Four dessert spoons full yeah. of yeah. sugar into your mix. Yeah. This is my, these are my eggs. Eggs and sugar and custard. And how many eggs? I've used two eggs for a pint and a half of milk. So we've got two eggs, a pint and a half of milk, four dessert spoons of um, sugar, and they looked yes. as though they were heaped, and that was white uh, custard or granulated sugar. And then we've got um, a tablespoon and a half of custard powder. Right. Uh, a, a dessert spoonful. I'm putting this in here now before it curdles. So now you're pouring. It cooks, you don't want scrambled eggs. So you're pouring the custard, the powder and the sugar, and the corn flour 
the cauliflower, the sugar and the eggs in here now. And I'm stirring it round in a non-stick pan. So how long will this process take? Oh, well, we can't really tell. When I've done this, when I've thickened it, I'm going to pass it through a sieve because the white of the egg may have stranded, it may have strands in it. So.